Um, but I'm going to go ahead and get started with introductions and let kind of um, my other colleagues introduce themselves as well. Uh, my name is Gabe Pena, and I am a student success coach here at Grand Valley State University. Um, I'm originally from Grand Rapids, um, so I've been here for most of my entire life um, and all of my adult life. Um, I have uh, worked as a student success coach for two years now, but prior to that, I had about three years doing advising, um, working a lot with uh, undecided students, so students who maybe weren't sure uh, what exactly they wanted to do for a major or who were playing around with a couple different ideas. Um, and then I also um, worked as an advisor, working a lot with um, education, um, students looking to be teachers, um, a lot of our uh, physical sciences um, and social sciences and things like that. So uh, I've worked with quite a few different students in a couple different areas. So I'm excited to talk to you about some advising and give you some good context. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and introduce my colleague, Lisa Knapp and have her introduce herself. Good afternoon. We're so glad that you're here today joining us. As Gabe said, my name is Lisa Knapp and I'm a career advisor in the Career Center at Grand Valley. I've been doing this since 2009. Prior to that, I worked at another college where I worked with some diversity programming. And prior to that, I was a newspaper reporter and a middle school, junior high English teacher. So uh, currently I advise students in the liberal arts. I work a lot with our first and second year programs and uh, any kind of career initiatives related to um, undecided majors as well. Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Liz Chase, and I am the coordinator for parent and supporter orientation. I'm absolutely thrilled to be here with you this afternoon. So thank you for taking the time out of your day to join us. Um, before we begin, I did want to go through a couple of housekeeping items. Um, first, I'd like to note that I am recording this session and it will be posted on our parent and supporter orientation website. So if you wanna go back and review this, you can. Um, that will be up on our website available to you. And I will include a link in the chat box uh, to the website. Next, we are gonna be conducting this Q&A session under the assumption that you have uh, gone to our website and viewed our video presentations, particularly the one about career and the one about resources for academic success. Um, if you haven't, it's fine. Um, we do highly recommend that you go on there and check out those videos. There's a lot of great information, um, but really we wanted to use this time uh, for you to ask questions based on the information that you've heard in those videos. So again, totally okay if you haven't viewed those. I will put a link to those uh, video presentations in the chat box as well. So how today's gonna work is uh, Gabe and Lisa are gonna share a couple of PowerPoint slides just to go over a couple key points in their areas and then we will open it up for questions that you have about advising and career support at Grand Valley. So without further ado, I'm gonna hand it over to Gabe and Lisa. Great, thanks Liz. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to go um, share my screen and uh, let's do this. So hopefully, and I'll look for my colleagues for a thumbs up. Are we seeing things? All right, cool. I'm not super confident yet with my skill. I always got to double check. Um, but again, we're going to go ahead and we're going to jump into it. Here are a couple um, kind of main things that we want to chat about. And then, um, you know, again, as questions come up, please feel free to, to, to post those. Um, so one of kind of the biggest things that we see a lot of students have concerns about um, or not even concerns, but questions about is this idea of picking a major. Um, and we get a lot of different ideas um, and you hear a lot of different input about, you know, when a student should pick a major, um, is it better to stay undecided in your first year and then pick a major and, and things like that. Um, and really the, the, the reality is um, if you have an idea about a major that you're thinking of, the way our programs are set up is that we have courses that um, we have you take to kind of explore the field a little bit um, and get familiar with the content in it um, and then kind of work your way through the programming. Um, some majors are a little bit more um, organized or structured in terms of, you know, you get to take one class before you take another. Um, but all of our advisors here are, are very well trained in making sure that you're in the right classes that are going to help make sure uh, that you feel comfortable 
um, with the content that you're taking um, and, and the courses and, and feel good about where that's going. Um, with that said, there is no real deadline for picking a major um, as long as you're working towards the content um, and the graduation requirements. Um, but I know I personally will tell a student if you're even 60% um, you know, feeling like you're going to go ahead and move forward with that major, then just declare it because declaring a major will get you connected to um, professional and faculty advisors in that area who can help you help make sure you're getting important information. So that leads us into our next point, um, talking about um, professional and faculty advisors. Oftentimes you'll, you'll hear a term, go talk to your advisor. Um, and here at Grand Valley, we do operate where we have um, somebody like a professional advisor like myself who is trained on course requirements, um, both for a specific major, but also for general graduation requirements. Uh, Grand Valley State University is a um, liberal arts institution. So, you know, regardless of your, if you're a business major um, or if you are a engineering major, you will um, take courses um, in a variety of different fields. And so that's something that um, professional advisors are um, especially trained to help students with. Um, and so anytime you have graduation requirements, maybe even questions about, you know, uh, sequencing to make sure a student's taking the right courses in the right semester to, to graduate um, on, a, on, a, on a good timeline, um, those are what professional advisors are going to be for. Faculty advisors are going to be people that you uh, connect with um, who are experts in their field. So these are faculty who are uh, teaching the classes in your major, and they're especially helpful for things like looking at grad school, um, talking about career aspirations, letters of recommendation for jobs, um, internships, different things like that. Faculty advisors are going to be really the people who are going to be best suited to help students in those areas, or at least in some of those areas, because of their direct connection to the field. Um, and many of the professors here, if not most, are, uh, you know, PhD or, um, you know, doctors. And so, you know, having somebody with a, you know, a PhD at the end of their signature, um, when we're talking about recommendations, that does go a long way. Um, and the resources that they have um, to help students with are really, really important. So. Both, you know, faculty advisors can do some of the professional advisor work and some professional advisors are very resourceful about different resources for internships and things like that. So there's never a wrong person to go to, um, but they do definitely serve different purposes, um, but are equally helpful in, in your student's journey. Um, in terms of resources, again, it's kind of a general term I throw around, um, but every major has an advising center um, that helps students with making sure they're on track to graduate. Um, each advising center is uh, directly connected to a college and each college has a list of majors that they're in. Um, and every advising center works very hard to make sure that um, they're sending out all kinds of resources to their students to make sure they know about any changes that may be happening. New programs are always um, looking at adding new majors, minors, certificates, um, all kinds of different academic programs. And advising centers are oftentimes the, the best people to talk to to see, hey, you know, how can I make this minor work with my major? How can I maybe do a double major now that this other program or, or whatever it might be? Um, and advising centers are also great people to go to, you know, really with any kind of question. Um, we know that there's a, again, a lot of information out there with the internet, um, and we encourage students to look up stuff on their own. But we always wanna make sure they're double checking just so that way there's no surprises when they're looking at uh, graduating um, at the end of their time here. And then with that, uh, we do have kind of a, a self auditing system here. Um, through our MyPath program. Um, it's something that's um, embedded in our um, technology that we use with students when we're registering for classes and students can go in there um, and once they've declared a major, they can see what requirements they've already completed, maybe what requirements they still have to complete. And they can actually play around themselves with looking at, okay, hey, I wanna maybe do a double major in this area. Um, I wanna maybe add two minors how many classes is that going to add um, and what's that going to look like. Um, and students can look at it themselves and play around with that, but again, we always say make sure you check with one of your advisors, either your faculty or your professional, just to make sure that there's not something that, um, you know, is in the, in the fine print that, that will kind of serve as a surprise for you. Um, and again, the biggest thing I want to let you all know is that there are tons of different people 
that you can come and talk to at this university. Um, obviously, we have a lot of resources on our websites, but again, being able to talk to an advisor, um, have your student connect with us um, is, is something that we take a lot of pride in and being good at um, and being quick with. Um, and so at any point, if there's questions about stuff, we as advisors, and again, I'll talk from a personal standpoint, having been somebody working with both first year students and graduating students, um, we'd rather have you ask us the question early on um, than try to have to fix something right at the very end. Um, and it's not, you know, the most common thing, but it does happen. And, and oftentimes, you know, it's something that, hey, if you would have just talked to an advisor um, earlier, you could have, you know, got some, we could have maybe avoided something. Um, and so we're really, we're really here for you. Um, we're really here to answer any kinds of questions you may have. Um, so please make sure you, you reach out to any advisor that um, can help you with that stuff. Um, with that, I'm going to kind of turn things over to Lisa. Again, if you have questions about that, please feel free to post it in the chat and we will have some time afterwards to uh, go ahead and address those. So Lisa, I'm going to go ahead and turn the next slide and I'm going to mute myself. Good. So as Gabe was describing the advisors, I was thinking one of the things that sometimes is, is interesting about Grand Valley is that really students have three advisors. There's the professional advisor, the faculty advisor, and then every student has a career advisor. And so we encourage students, especially in their first year, just to get to know their career advisor. It's a chance for them to touch base, say, hey, these are the kinds of things I'm thinking about. Career advisors are assigned by major. That doesn't mean there aren't career advisors for students who are still deciding or kind of picking and choosing. So we would say that you know, career starts first year, students should connect early and often. And what that means for a first year student isn't that they should go out and buy a suit and they should get an internship on day one. It's really just get to understand what the Career Center offers, to meet your career advisor, to create a handshake account, which is our online platform. It is a way for them to connect to campus experiences, whether it's through the Career Center for on-campus jobs, off-campus jobs, it might be where they find their internship, but it also is where they can find some opportunities as it relates to volunteering in the community. So we encourage them to get connected with the platform, get an account up and running. That way they understand, they understand what it is that they have access to. So get to know your career advisor, get the Handshake account up and running, and then finally to develop a career action plan. And we are not asking for students to determine what they want to do with the, their entire life, right? If I were to ask you what you wanted to do when you were 18, you may have had one idea that is very different from where you are now. Um, we are just asking that your student say, this year, what do I want to accomplish? Maybe it's I want to have great grades that get me into the program I'm aiming for. Maybe it is I want to try several different experiences so that next year I can choose one intentionally and purposefully as it relates to student orgs. So we're just talking little steps so that when they get to their senior year, it's just a natural progression of what's already been started as opposed to, oh no, I've been doing all this great stuff, but I don't know why. So. Connect early, connect often, meet your career advisor, get the Handshake account up and running, and start thinking about those short-term action steps that will lead into that, that long-term um, plan, which really just means the first stop after Grand Valley, whether it's career, uh, year of service, or grad school. Thanks. Okay, so now um, we're gonna just open it up. For any questions that you might have about advising uh, or career services at Grand Valley. And again, you can type those into that chat box. I will read them out loud and then we'll have uh, Lisa and Gabe answer those. Okay, are all students required to complete an internship before they graduate? Good question. All right, so I will take that one. No, all students aren't required to do internships before they graduate. Some programs have them built into their curriculum so they can take anywhere from one to six credits worth of internships. At one point we had one major that you could take 12 credits worth of internships if you divided up six credits at a time or three and three and three. 
uh, when an internship is for credit, it usually requires about 50 hours for each credit, so 150 hours they'll work during that semester. And uh, the schools or the programs do not place the student in an internship. They are expecting that part of the learning from the internship process is learning how to identify places and spaces that you might want to go to, applying for job postings, maybe networking into an opportunity that lines up with your career plans. And that is where the Career Center comes in. We can walk alongside your student. We have a lot of employer relationships and connections that will help with that. Handshake will have a lot of internship postings. There are exceptions to that. That would be the College of Ed. You submit your application and then they do place you. And I believe a lot of the health professions work that way as well. But for most of the majors that have internship as an opportunity, it's student driven. They're finding it, they're, they're securing it. So students that are in a major or a program that do not require an internship have an option to do an internship and many students do two or three internships over the course of their time at the university. The early ones might be just getting familiar with a professional workplace, maybe building some of those soft skills that are so important in career success. But many of the uh, students will wait until they're further along and have a real technical skill and maybe are hoping to have the internship lead directly into employment, which happens for about 70% of students. They convert an internship into uh, that first job. Okay, looks like we have a follow-up question to that. Will my student have the same advisor all four years? I can uh, try to answer that as best as possible and then I'll say this, you know, again, that advisor term can get a little broad. I'm thinking, you know, career advisor wise, um, I believe, you know, depending on if they change majors, they may be working with that same person. Um, in terms of, of, you know, an academic, um, you know, degree program advisor, um, they will have a same advisor their entire time, depending on their major. If they ever change their major, they will get assigned a new advisor. Um, within that program and different advisors work with different colleges. So, um, you know, if a student switches from business to nursing, they're going to want to make sure they talk to the nursing person um, to make sure that they're, you know, on track with those requirements. Um, and same with faculty. Um, faculty, they will get assigned a new faculty um, advisor and then they will work with that advisor um, closely. Those four, you know, or however long that they're here in that program, they will work with them. Um, so it's kind of nice because they'll be able to have somebody and we really encourage students to get to know them because uh, the more they the more they get to know that advisor, the more that advisor gets to know their specific interests, um, the better they can help connect them to things. Um, and faculty and advisors are always going to conferences and hearing about new things. Um, and so the more you keep up with them, um, you know, the next time an advisor hears about something, they say, hey, I think this might be really great for such and such let me reach out to them and say hey are you interested um, and this extends to research opportunities and all different kinds of things like that as well so um, yes in just about every every um, situation a student will have the same advisor um, that they get when they change to a major and that includes being exploratory even being an exploratory or undecided student they have an advisor um, who they will work with and I might add that in the Career Center, they are assigned by major, but if you start with one advisor and that person is someone you work well with, the truth is in the Career Center, I might be your point person, but you have access to all of the advisors. So many of us work together. We have students that have met with multiple advisors in our center based on the employer relationship they're trying to build. If one of my coworkers has a relationship with that employer, of course, we're going to connect the student to that person. It's just a place where we can model networking and connection building. Okay, should my student look at getting an on-campus or off-campus job to help build their resume? Yes, um, I can say that with, with great vigor. 
so many students don't have that work experience, just that foundational work experience. So if it is possible for them to balance a student job in the context of their coursework, we encourage them to do so. You know, 10 to 20 hours is kind of the tipping point. The research shows students tend to be more connected to their campus community and they tend to be more structured in the way that they approach their homework if they have that extra responsibility. They're also learning communication skills, getting along in the workplace, all of those things. The extra money, also nice. So we encourage students, I think, on campus or off campus, you're going to gain those skills. I think the benefit of an on-campus employer is they understand what it means to be on campus, what it means to be a student, you know, that schedules change, that sometimes they're trying to work within the context of work groups with other students. And so I think the on-campus employers tend to be easier for our students, especially the first and second year students, many of whom this is their first job. They, it tends to be a good, good learning ground. But that being said, we have a lot of great employer partners in the area, right in Allendale. Um, we have a lot of students that go in towards Granville and work in the mall area where there's a lot of retail opportunities. And then many that go take the bus line down um, through Standale, there are some employers there that, that employ a large number of our students and even downtown. So, so a lot of students do a lot of different things, but we definitely encourage having a job experience and when possible, making that experience be on campus. Okay, if my student does not declare a major during their advising date this summer, will they still graduate on time? Yeah, um, so first, you know, to kind of address the whole declaring a major, students do have the option to remain, again, undecided um, or exploratory as your official, you know, undecided major here. Um, and what will, or what should be happening is, um, you know, the, the advisor will kind of tell them, hey, these are kind of the classes you're taking, this is what things are working for, so we'll always make sure that the classes you're taking um, are in some way helping you progress through your graduation requirements. And then, um, you know, the question about graduating on time, that always looks different person to person. Um, some programs um, are a little bit longer. Um, a lot of students are look at summer classes as options um, to, to kind of help uh, either get through more credits um, in a shorter, you know, amount of days and months and years. Um, but there are often times where I talk with advisors who will say it's sometimes better to take things slow uh, to make sure they do well, especially for, you know, really competitive programs um, like our nursing program or, or, you know, looking for students looking to go to, um, you know, physician's assistant, these really competitive um, grad programs. And so not declaring a major does not necessarily set them behind at all. Um, but what that student will want to do is make sure that they're taking steps both this summer, um, as well as their first year to look at, hey, what are some of the things I'm going to need to get answered in order to help pick a major? Um, because being undecided is definitely one of those things where you've gotta make sure you're taking the right steps. It's not a bad thing as long as you're kind of working um, towards answering those questions. And that's something that an advisor, both an academic advisor, as well as a career center advisor can help you figure out, you know, what questions should I even be asking? Um, because I know as, when I was an undergrad, I changed my major, I think, about three different times. Um, and a lot of that came from conversations with parents, um, professors, and, and, and advisors to figure out, hey, what's this going to look like? What's this going to do? Um, and so, again, not declaring does not necessarily set you, you know, behind. And I'll, I'll use behind as, you know, the, uh, the whole the idea of a four-year. Um, but it does vary quite a bit student to student, so it's something that they'll want to make sure they're in constant connection with both an academic and career advisor about. Any other questions about advising or career at Grand Valley? Okay, I'm, I'm sensing that the questions are kind of winding down, which is fine. Um, if you wanted um, either Lisa or Gabe to, to follow up with you, if you had a particular situation you wanted to discuss, 
um, you can absolutely message me in the chat box privately and just include your contact information and who you'd like a follow up from. They're happy to do that. Um, we also realize that you know you might not have questions now, but maybe in a couple of days or in a couple of weeks, once you start processing that information, you might get more questions. So um, this is our contact information for uh, advising as well as the Career Center. So definitely feel free to reach out. Um, we are available over the summer, eager to help you, um, and excited to see you and your student in the fall. So thank you again for participating and joining us this afternoon. Um, Stay safe. I'm going to throw it back over to Lisa and Gabe if you have any final comments. I would, I would just add again, a reach out, let us know if you have questions, especially as things are very, you know, kind of uncertain and unsteady. I was meeting with students and I, you know, I don't know if I could imagine going through all of this um, right now, um, looking at school and things like that. So we're, we want to be here to help you make the best decision for, for you and, and yours. And so please feel free to reach out to us. Let us know. We are here all summer um, working um, from home, from, you know, my dining room. Um, and so if you have questions, please feel free to let us know. Um, we want to be able to help. And I would just echo that invitation. So we have both appointments that students can set up. You can call our office. We have some great online resources. And we also have some drop-in hours. So each day there are some peer advisors that are kind of ready and waiting to answer questions. Uh, your student can link in right through our website. So if you have questions, you can go there as well. It's not just for students. So, so we encourage you to call or connect in whatever way is helpful. If your student does decide to get an on-campus job or even an off-campus job and wants to get their resume ready or practice interviewing for those, we're available all summer to help students with that as well. So we love those calls and uh, look forward to hearing from you or your student. Thanks again. Have a great day.